So we are midway through November. We're getting close to Thanksgiving, which will be next week. And you don't need me to tell you that this has been a crazy year. <laughs> you know, for a lot of people, um, Thanksgiving is not really in the cards this year. You know, COVID-19 has taken over 200,000 lives in our country, over a million lives worldwide. Um, our economy, of course, as you know, is, has taken a huge hit. Millions of people's jobs have gotten upended. We've seen racial strife like we haven't seen since the 1960s. Um, we just had, had an incredibly contentious presidential election that's touted in these apocalyptic terms. It's been a tough year, yeah? But you know what? In spite of all of that, I'm really thankful. Um, and you know, a lot of things, really interesting things, happened on this day in history, and they all remind me of things to be thankful for. So check this out. On November 19, 1274, the Mongol army landed in Japan in an attempt to conquer that country. Now, the Mongol army was defeated in a one-day battle. The survivors had to get back in their ships, try to flee, try to get back uh, to, to the mainland, hoping to fight another day. But a typhoon just rose up out of nowhere, destroyed most of the Mongol fleet. And that typhoon, the Japanese people attributed to the gods, and it was called a divine wind, or kamikaze, right? On November 19, 1493, Christopher Columbus was on his second voyage to the New World, and he discovered Puerto Rico. On November 19, 1805, a couple of guys you might have heard of named Lewis and Clark reached the Pacific Ocean after more than two years of arduous travel, and when they got there, they cried out, Oh, the joy! as they became the first white Americans to cross the North American continent. On November 19, 1861, Julia Ward Howe set down on paper the lyrics to her famous song that I know you've heard, The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Last but not least, on November 19, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address. Okay? Now, these five events took place a long time ago. Uh, they don't necessarily have much bearing on my life or yours right now in the 21st century. But, they're reminders uh, to me of how much God has blessed us as a whole and has blessed me personally. But for starters, I have two friends in Japan whom I've known since 1986. That's almost 35 years ago. And I love my friends. Their names are Masaki and Yuko. Um, I'm thankful for them, and um, I'm thankful for the beauty of cross-cultural friendship. Um, I'm grateful for the ability of modern technology so I can stay in touch with them. I love them a lot. Um, I'm thankful for God's creation. See, I, I went to Puerto Rico in uh, 2003 or 2004, I don't remember now. Um, I went with Sylvia, and we visited, uh, on one of those times, a phosphorescent bay. And that phosphorescent bay was one of the most amazing, mind-blowing, beautiful sights I've ever seen in my whole life. God's creation is beautiful. And I'm thankful for the ability to do a job well done and, and to feel the satisfaction of knowing that at the end of the day, I've accomplished the task that I set out to do and I've done it to the best of my ability. And it may not always be the, oh, the joy of Lewis and Clark, but I can rest well at night knowing that I've done what I was created to do. I'm thankful for the promise of Jesus' return. As you know, as the battle hymn of the Republic reminds us prophetically, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And I'm thankful for the words of great leaders who remind us that this world can be harsh and brutal and ugly and bloody, but there are some things, there are some eternal things that are worth dying for. 
and as the soldiers at, uh, at Gettysburg dedicated themselves to the preservation of democracy and freedom, you and I can dedicate ourselves today to making this world a better place for our fellow Americans, for our fellow human beings, our brothers and sisters across the world, all for the glory of God. So today, what are you thankful for?